Tell me what the name of the album was that you just made and why we're here. Uh, we made an album called Desire Pathway and we're in Alaska because um, we've uh, never been here and there are people here and they said we could come. <laughs> they gave us permission. That's called the rock and roll rules. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm bad at being interviewed. Two, one, two, three. We're in Anchorage, Alaska. We saw the ceremonial start to the Iditarod. <laughs> Yeah, we got everything that's Scandinavian. Yeah. We have our piece. Yeah. yeah. Just I'd never seen a moose before. I didn't think my first experience would be while carrying gear. A moose is a camel and a horse and a cow combined into one a beautiful awesome. animal. Don't have them. Thanks for screaming females, we're from New Brunswick, New Jersey, and we're so grateful to be here in Alaska. It's our first time here. It's already the best place in the whole world. It's not easy to book a tour in Alaska because geographically everything is far away in Alaska and in the wintertime, um, some cities don't even exist with people in them. My name is Jaybird Oliver. We were in a band called Termination Dust together. Yeah! which is no longer active, but there is some free merch at the table. If you want to throw a donation, that's cool, but you can also just take it so it doesn't just die. We were on an eight month long tour in March of 2020 when COVID happened. I was really excited to get into playing music again myself. And DIY forever, baby. <laughs> Your turn. My <laughs> Marissa. Look at that difference. I, yeah, wow, you really <laughs> are that tall. I was all the way. I've done this before. I've done this before. That's scary. If I saw someone that tall, I'd be afraid. <laughs> you should so see me in a meeting. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit so you can okay. cut it. This is Katherine Hepburn's dream, which is to have multiple people following her around and demanding for her attention as an actress, which is what I'm being right now, wearing sweatpants, which is, I feel like, probably was her trouser of choice. <laughs> trouser of choice. You need to wake up. And these are going to sleep. Oh my gosh. We are in Homer, Alaska. We're out on the spit right now. Uh, which is just this long stretch of land that runs out into this 
fjord or glacier or whatever the hell it is. That, see, this is cool. This is like what we have, which is just regular garbage. This would be hanging in an Airbnb. Right? I'm a geologist. Look at this wood. It's mad old and burnt. <laughs> we rocked last night for our 50th state and uh yeah driving back to anchorage later today so there's three seasons of alaska it's winter breakup and construction what happens when old people go on tour i, 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 like, to really take, I like to take oh, that yeah. belt and uh do this. I like to take my phone and undo it. <laughs> Every time you guys try and prank me, you can't do it. was on the couch and I was like, oh man, we had so much fun last night. Jared did putting on the Ritz at open mic night. And she was just like, oh cool. It's like, so, totally believable. It's, <laughs> that is not believable. Yeah, he got <laughs> nude on the beach that one time. It's so uncomfortable to talk to you because we're so short and our eyes are just like, <laughs> it's like I never slow dancing. <laughs> It's just, I just finally feel like I have some kind of like daily itinerary when I'm on tour because when I'm at home, I just like, I'm really bad at like building routine. It's hard to like tucker me out and stuff like that. I'll have like trouble sleeping. Mm -hmm. That's not the shape of pizza in, at home. People are menstruating, they put you in the shisha. I should be in there and let out when I'm done. You gotta bleach out. <laughs> Hold it upside down. I mean, no. If you're upside down, it'll go in your brain. Oh, it flows back into your brain. That's how bodies work. <laughs> Did you pack your sunglasses? I don't have sunglasses. <laughs> Yeah, right, right before we play, I write the set list.
That's it, all of it. <laughs> Music in the indigenous communities in Alaska has always been huge. It's a huge part of our cultures. The music scene in Anchorage and like Alaska in general is pretty close knit. It's really isolated up here though. So we don't often get the opportunity to like have like cool bands featured like from the lower 48. Uh, we don't often get to go to the lower 48. I come from a village of 60 people and it's especially isolated out there. We are desperate for music. <laughs> it's really dark half of the year, so <laughs> there's a lot of like time we get to brood and think about what we want to create, and in the summer everyone gets manic because there's no dark, so <laughs> it's just light all the time, and we're so ready to just be filled with energy, creative energy, creative output. <laughs> This is where Stubbs the cat mayor lives. <laughs> Who's the cat mayor? <laughs> Stubbs. He, there's a couple of Mr. Stubbs. Oh, I guess he is Mr. Stubbs. Mayor Stubbs. Uh, there's a couple of assassination attempts <laughs> over the years with neighborhood dogs. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's forever. Oh. Yeah. Slip. Don't slip. We're gonna turn back so you don't get charged by a moose. Moose. <laughs> Come over here and maul me. Maul me. Mike and Jared or myself got mauled by that moose over there and died. Then our record sales would go sky high. <laughs> I live in, uh, or near downtown Anchorage and there's all these crab apple trees and the crab apples would fall into the gutters and ferment there. And so he'd go around and eat all the fermented crab apples and get surly. You get drunk and then certainly walk around and like, like kind of like make displays of cars and whatnot. Moose, Moose loves getting drunk. Yeah. Well, he's gone now. He's no longer a menace to society. <laughs> we've had to deal with a lot of like hard stuff while we've been traveling, and I feel like it's better when you're with people in the car to just be like, to not, <clears throat> I guess, to not take the difficult thing that you're dealing with and just like cram it down and to let everyone be privy to the fact that maybe you're like crying about something that's really sad and difficult and it's totally normal. I mean, it's so hard to talk about because COVID happened. I lost perspective on every uh, like mechanism of how it was to exist in the world <laughs> in any capacity, especially in being in a rock and roll band for fun. So I was just happy to be there. And now I'm really happy to be here. Turn around in beautiful Talkeetna, Alaska. <laughs> it's just nice to be around some other people. I caught up on a lot of television. Have you ever seen The Office? It's funny. The world has gone mad today. It's bad today. <laughs> when we played Homer, I was like, oh, we played for like 2% of yeah. The population of Homer, and then it happened again <laughs> last night. Anchorage is going to be the challenge because 2% of Anchorage is about 5,000 people. Uh, we don't have the school. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll get 0 0.02. What's 0 0.02% of Anchorage? Yeah. Can you crunch that? How crunch the numbers? Minus two zeros. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess that's, that's 54 people. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Think that's what it's all about. A responsible punk lifestyle. <laughs> Set my alarm for 8 a.m. <laughs> In bed by 11. Where so are we going? Here we Where are we playing? Um, Sad Mother Vintage. Sounds dangerous. How long have y'all known each other? Um. We started playing together in 2005, which is basically when we met. So Mike was 17, uh, Marissa was 19, and I was 21. And I'm gonna be 40 this year. Woo! That's a long fucking time. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> you ever thought about how much time you spent with Mike and Sarah? Yes, I hang out with them way more than um, 
anyone else. Like in your life? Literally anyone else in my life. First met Marissa. She had ringworm. And I was like, hey, why don't we go to the health center and get that checked out? It was good advice. <laughs> I had ringworm for like months. It was too depressed to get rid of it. <laughs> that was the beginning of our relationship. It was really big. Emotionally and uh, yeah. musically. <laughs> It was like this big. According to uh, what I could find on the internet, uh, this is going to be the northernmost show we've ever played. Now I'm looking up, apparently there's the northernmost town in the world that has over a thousand people. It's in... Uh, Norway, and uh, it's called like Long Year in or something. There's a thousand people there. So I was just trying to see if there's any bars that had shows there or anything. So you can one up it. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite food is ice. <laughs> I'm gonna go chomp all the exhibits. <laughs> we are at the Ice Museum of Alaska. I'm sitting on what I think might be a, a reindeer. Soon I'm gonna go down a slide. <laughs> this is the best $15 I've ever seen. Reindeer! 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 I think the Ice Museum was a little bit like action part. <laughs> the flooding females. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Jarrett, I'm screw female. Just uh, don't cut, just tour. keep it rolling. Hey, hey. 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 <laughs> so currently, the screaming females are setting up right now, so we gotta wait for them. <laughs> I'm about to be a screaming female during this. Holy crap. Be, I'm not a female, but I will be screaming. Yeah. that we bring a, a tear to her eye because because we're, so we're young punks going out to a going out to a punk show hosted by bad mother hosted by bad mother making shows for the people for the people by the people for the people by the people that's a nice base that's a nice base i'm all about that base i'm all are you all about that base We need live music in Fairbanks. Live music in Fairbanks. If you want to make live music, in Fairbanks, make that. Make that. Just make it. What? Make live music in Fairbanks. Will you do that? <laughs> we can make live music in Fairbanks. Cut the camera. What?
for this? My mom's right there. Okay, good. <laughs> so nice to have you to say. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. group of teenagers who were just kind of like holding hands and smiling and pogoing and I said <clears throat> that's the way moshing should be I, you just jump up and down and no one gets hurt I don't understand what the big deal is everyone's always making it like this big to do like throwing themselves sorry we're dying <laughs> yeah, sorry no I'm it's fine a good driver. I'm ready to go <laughs> the last time I was here I was very drunk <laughs> yes, we create it it's a makeup closet. It's a makeup closet. <laughs> this is literally a makeup. Yeah, get in here. What is this? It's to make out. Oh my god. Something fun about having a national touring band is that they have a videographer that films everything. That's good content. Have a ball. This is what he really breaks it down. The stepmom's always like, how do you know that? I'm like, I'm gay. <laughs> so this is what a green room is like. <laughs> I always wonder. Just as I always wonder. <laughs> <laughs> we're murmur. Um, and we're right over here in the green room of Goldie's. It's our <laughs> first ever tour. Before Kevin joined the band, we had a completely different sound. Um, we were much more acoustic based. And then the pandemic happened and we got angry. Uh, loud. My brother is coming home, and I don't want to be alone in the house anymore. I just hope he's ready. I haven't even been playing two years, and it's like I'm doing stuff like this. It's just really surreal, kind of, and it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what I'm playing at all. I barely remember the tuning of the bass. I'm just like, I do it all in my ear, and I'm just like, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> don't put yourself down like that. My mother had problems, and I miss her, but I don't want to ever go through that again. Well, I need white noise, and I need one more. Sleep through this daylight and drown last shred of conscience I got left. Some elderly exercises. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My grandma used to do these. Yeah. You just kick literally all the way. Eat a longevity. I'm like already I'm so sorry. <laughs>
amazing. Like, best guitar player. Have you listened to Streaming Females before today? No. What are you guys up to after this? Yeah. I mean, after this right here? Yeah. Go, on, go to bed. Oh, thank Christ. I'm too tired for this shit. Why are you on here? Why? Yeah. It's a really existential question. I'm driving all the way back to Anchorage, which is a pretty good haul. Um, so we gotta get up and get going. And then do Cafecito Bonito for the All Ages show in Anchorage today. Um, and we haven't been in some place uh, with a shower in a long time. We will be playing show 1450, which is a round number, but doesn't really seem like that uh, particular of a milestone. I celebrated 49 too. They're all milestones. <laughs> to their schools and their families. So call Dunleavy, leave him a fucking voicemail, email him. If you can vote, vote. Fuck Dunleavy, get him out of fucking office. Fuck Dunleavy! Fuck Dunleavy! This song's dedicated to fuck Dunleavy. And remember to drink fucking water. Drink water, call your Congress people, and get ready for It's like we're on work tour. When I was 14, the shins signed my checks. And somebody had a samurai sword and was chasing another person who had a baseball bat. And I let them into the Wii store to get away from the sword guy. And I locked the doors and he was like, ah, you know, outside of the door with the sword. And <laughs> when Jersey Shore debuted, we were on tour. We were playing this car in Columbus, Ohio. And they had it on. TV at the bar, people were like, is this really what New Jersey is like? And I was like, yes, like a hundred percent. This is exactly what it was like where I grew up. <laughs> What's the next stop on our... We're gonna do the record store. This is pretty much the only exclusive record seller left in the state. We're in a band called Screaming Females. Wow. Oh. We went to Homer, Talkeetna, Fairbanks, and Anchorage. Okay. Talkeetna's fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was awesome. What, what's your, like, general takeaway from traveling? How do you like it? What do you think? Um, I'm really impressed by everyone in the band's ability to sleep on demand and in all terrain scenarios. Like, what's Alaska sort of been like for you? It's been delightful. 
Sorry, I don't know what to do when you <laughs> interview me. I have not, for a, one moment, had a bad time since coming here. I can tell you one bad moment I had. When I had to shit at Coots. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no lock on the door, there's no toilet seat. How many people are here? Too many. The estimate was going to be five or six hundred paid. <laughs> Don't speak, just what you're saying, so please stop explaining. The only rhyme or reason with it is that I usually try to include new stuff if we're on tour for a new record. And I try not to repeat everything from the night before. See, those both start on A, so I'll put them together. So there is some reason you think about... Sometimes. Thanks for screaming, females. We're from New Brunswick, New Jersey. We're so grateful to be here in our event to Alaska before, but now we've been to Alaska for a whole week. Thank you so much to Jaybird. He's there. You should give them cash tip or buy them a slice of pizza. We have a new record. It's called Desire Cafe, and you can get it um, over there. Look at my finger. Okay. Thanks.
Adams playing for the first time in months. No one thought they were coming back. Fuck, at the end of the night, we're screaming females. No mosh pit. We're here at Coots. The mosh pit was lovely. It was friendly. It was nice. My face melted off. I'm going to have to go to work, but my face melted off. kids there were just absolutely amazing and it was like the kind of thing where you're just like this is what makes it all worth it is like playing for these kids right now because of how happy and stoked they are and like they're like literally living at like the ends of the earth. Now we just like have to pack up and go. I was like, okay, Popeye 24. I wish there was another band. Let's go to bed. Woo, let's go to sleep. I've been awake for... Let's think about this. Uh, wow. Near, Somewhere around 36 to 40 hours. Yeah, I've been, around, I've been awake 30 something to 40 something hours. A uh, moderately attainable milestone that we thought we could do one day is play all of the states in the country that we live in. Uh, and now we finally have. <laughs> we achieved a desire. We did it our own way. <laughs> you took a pathway to your desire. Yeah, like Frankie said, it did it my way. I love the DIY community, and mm -hmm. this trip has restored my faith in what in what community can accomplish. If we went 20 times, I would still want to play places like the Sheldon Arts Community Hangar. And the people who are willing to take off like a week of work to drive us around and let us sleep in their house and hang out with us all day and take us like for hikes and like to the cool bar and stuff like that and you know essentially hopefully become like our lifelong friends and that's uh, a, a really big part of why we play music maybe maybe sometimes it even supersedes the music itself i feel like most of our friends are still the people that we met on like the first national tour we did which was nice like 17 years ago yeah Bye, Alaska. <laughs> it's kind of a magical place, and you'll just have to find out for yourself. Come to Alaska. <laughs> wow, that was like the perfect last line to now just be able to zoom in on a woodpecker. That's actually a.
Chicky. Oh, sorry. Chicky. Sorry, I don't actually know things because I'm from Toxic Wasteland. <laughs>